All right. Thanks for joining the 96th episode of the Brian Hornback Experience. We have another candidate. This is Republican State Representative District 18 candidate. Also, City Councilwoman at large, Janet Testerman. How are you, Janet? I'm doing well, Brian. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. So, wow. I'll tell you what. Um, everybody kind of expect District 18 is represented by State Representative Eddie Manis, uh, who's just finished up serving two years because legislative terms are two years. And boy, at the last minute, uh, Eddie decided that his priorities after his father passed away just didn't, He did, I guess he just didn't. And so you had to make a decision quick, is my point. I did. So um, let's, uh, first of all, let's kind of introduce folks. Testament is a well-known name in Knoxville. Your father was a very successful mayor for a number of years. Um, your brother is a, is a pro, was a pro tennis athlete. Uh, and of course you're popular in and of yourself, right? <laughs> I don't know about all that, Brian. You're the, you're the C, hard. the, the, the key is you're the CEO of Young Williams Animal Center, which finds furry animals their forever home. And the one that's sleeping underneath my desk right now was actually born at Young Williams and came home right after he was, uh, my son was, my son was a photog for a TV station in Knoxville and he saw him be born there and um, he adopted him. And then when, when my son came home uh, for one of his stints, the dog stayed. And then when my son wanted him back, I wouldn't let him go. So. <laughs> I know they become part of the family. How long ago was that? Uh, don't, that was in 2013. Oh, wow. That's so nice. Dolce's still here. He's, he, he, he's a good little dude, but anyway, let's talk about, um, Kind of, uh, first of all, how, have you enjoyed city council for the last, what, three and a half years? Yeah, actually just two and a half. Ah. It feels like a long time it's had. I mean, you know, I think we had maybe five meetings before the world shut down. So, right. Um, you know, spent a good year plus on Zoom. So that's not exactly ideal uh, as far as is wanting to serve, you know, serving public office you, you know I, I really missed the opportunity for that period of time not being really out and about with uh, my constituents and being in the various communities across the city of Knoxville and touch and really hear about you know what's going on their day to day and you know what issues that you know they were facing so that that was hard that's you know that's a big reason on why people want to run Right. So, well, you are took away from that. right, and you are a lifelong Republican. I mean, you you uh, this year, um, you know, the the city was facing some some tough decisions on budget uh, and whether whether police officers should get raises or not, and and uh, you know, you made a you made a, a critical decision that uh, to vote against the budget. I mean. Um, the, those type of uh, decisions, obviously, I mean, I served on the school board, and it's not always easy to to be the lone vote on stuff. But uh, you're not afraid to make those decisions. Uh, I would, obviously, the record shows. So talk well, about that I, a little bit. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely am not. I mean, I'm here to, to try and make the, the best decisions for uh, Knoxville and the people of Knoxville. Uh, let me clarify that a little bit because there were three different votes for that. Right. One right. And uh, you had it, the tax increase, right. you had the budget, and you had the compensation study. Mm. So to be very clear, um, I was 1,000% in right. favor of the raises for our government workers, our public service workers, and our first responders. I mean, our police and our fire Absolutely. I mean, we knew from the compensation study that we were behind, uh, you know, uh, fair market. I mean, we're all struggling with labor issues, but even prior to COVID and all of that, uh, we, uh, we needed to make right uh, more competitive pay mm. for all of those. So I, I voted for that. Absolutely. Um, I did vote against the property increase right. because I, you know, we're here we're in the middle of record inflation numbers and people are struggling and 
And, you know, I just couldn't justify, you know, taking those dollars out of people's pockets. I mean, they're making decisions, as we all know, between rent, gas, food, groceries, medicine, you know, name it. So, um, and here's the thing. I mean, I, I voted for compensation, but I disagree on how to fund it, hence mm-hmm. uh, why I did not support the budget. Right. Well, and, and I'm, I'm glad you corrected me on that because uh, that that is a major distinction. Um uh, in the fact that, you know, the property tax increase, I mean, obviously it's a, uh, it's a multi-million dollar budget. Uh, so, I mean, it's, um, there's, I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta reward the people that are there. So, um, what are you, uh, obviously, um, we've talked about your young Williams, you've been active in the community. I mean, when people go to Janet and the about, I mean, there's a long line of current and past boards. You're, uh, you're currently the beer board chair. I, here's a joke for those that are listening. So you know where the good beer is, right? Yeah. Uh, that was that was a joke. All right, but you've been involved in so many other professional organizations and and in our community, and you've been I mean you've been recognized uh, YWCA Tribute of Women finalist in in, in 2012 and 2019. I mean, you know you've been honored so many times. But let's talk about now that that now that you're running for state rep and you're kind of turning your attention to to the state, you know, uh, some of the issues you've got on your website, um, you know, obviously we're, we're talking about back in the blue. I mean, you've already, you've already showed, uh, through your, through your vote on the compensation study, uh, and, and the pay raise for the officers that you back the blue. Um, how can, how can you back the blue, uh, as a, as a state rep or well, how, how do you, how, how do you see that happening? I guess is what I should say. Well, I think we know just across the entire country that these agencies have uh, struggled with recruiting yep. uh, and trying to, you know, uh, bring our talent to, you know, if it's, if it's lateral moves from other agencies, you know, we, we also know that there are states that have not, in my opinion, uh, really supported their law enforcement. And uh, those men and women are seeking to come to communities where they are supported and I think, you know, from a state and local level, I mean, we can support that. But not only that, I mean, we need to be able to do uh, not just fund them, but fully fund them. It's mm. not just about headcount and bandwidth, but they also need, you know, equipment. They need uh, tools and resources and, and other to support uh, what they are charged to do on a daily basis. And so, you know, it's, yes, it's a community issue, but from a state level, you know, there is funding and, and uh, to continue to support the important critical work that they do. Because right now our law enforcement has been, uh, you know, they, they are doing a number of things that they didn't really sign up to do. Mm. And, uh, and, and kind of our firefighters, too. I mean, the Tennessee Firefighters Association has endorsed me and, and there are things that our firefighters have uh, have been charged, you know, from a first responder standpoint. Yep. Uh, and so, you know, being paramedics, for instance, and and how do we get, you know, every shift to have a paramedic uh, on that shift? Because as a first responder, they're often the first ones, hence on the scene. So it's, you know... There are just a lot other than staffing that, you know, again, from an allocation standpoint, from resources. I mean, our, our firefighters are dealing things, dealing with things as, um, you know, we've got mental illness. That is, that is in, I mean, those are high-stress professions. And yep. So how do we take care of them? How do we take care of, from a health perspective, our firefighters? Um, you know, being exposed to a lot of the toxins that they are that have uh, – proven to result in cancer, for instance. And so, again, it's, it's much more broad and far-reaching that we really need to look at holistically um, at a state level uh, to help support our communities. Well, I mean, it's, it's even to the point of now, now we're aware of the fentanyl scourge. And when, sure. our, and when, our, when our deputy, when our, when our police officers and when our, when our, um, when our first responders, our, our firefighters, paramedics go out there, I mean, uh, Charm Allen told a story that where, you know, even if they get even if they get the dust of fentanyl on them, it, it could cause an overdose. Uh, and so so there's a lot of that. But uh, yeah. And so we talk about mental health. Um, you know, uh, t- 
Tennessee has helped. Uh, some of the legislators have helped to get the um, Behavioral Health Urgent Care Center over on Western Avenue. We're making, you know, we're making some, you know, you hear some people talk and they act like we're not doing anything about mental health, but obviously the state has ponied up with the city and the county on the Behavioral Urgent Care Center with Helen Ross McNabb. Uh, we've got the Tenova Mental Health out on Middlebrook. But obviously when we lost Lake Shore, and that's what everybody wants to talk about. But I think we're making, I think the city and county are making some progress. But um, kind of talk about your thought on mental health and how we might be able to, to continue to grow um, some expansion here in, in especially the 18th district where you're running to be the yeah. state rep. Yeah, I mean, well, absolutely. I mean, you know, mental health is uh, a growing issue. We all know that. It's been something that's sort of been swept uh, for a long time. And, you know, I equate mental health to cancer. If you haven't been diagnosed yourself, you have a friend or family member or an acquaintance that has impact been impacted in some way, shape, or form. And so, to me right now, yes, I was very proud of the governor and the legislature for allocating that $4.1 million here locally to the new behavioral health uh, facility at the old St. Mary's site. But, you know, right now it's become a perfect storm. I mean, the need has grown exponentially, but our resources have declined. And, you know, we know that, you know, uh, last year there were 51 percent more suicides compared to a national average of 30 percent mm. um and that mental health cases i mean you know 50 percent of mental health cases occur by the time someone is, is 14 years old and 70 percent by 24. um and so it's a crisis it's a crisis with our children and not to mention that 15 to 25 percent of inmates in our local jails are suffering from mental illness so you think about that. I mean, to me, mental health is at the core of addiction, homelessness, crime, joblessness, economic loss. And that really is a domino effect that impacts every pillar of our community that we really need to be intentional and prioritize uh, in addressing. Yeah. And, you know, and then, and then we talk about, and I think, I think the two are kind of connected, education and then workforce and, um, and workforce development and economic growth. Um, you know, I think the county and, and the city uh, have done a pretty good job. I mean, uh, Mayor Jacobs has got the uh, the trade school for adults coming online. Um, and uh, I know that, um, I know the city's working on economic growth as well, but kind of talk about how, if you're the state rep uh, for District 18, both education, economic growth and workforce development, am I right or am I wrong that all those three kind of do at some point kind of meld together into into one big ball at some point sure they do i mean here's the thing we need to bottom line we need to set our kids up for success and you know we've been failing them for a long time in the in the sense that it, it's it's just such a complex issue and you know less than half of our kids are career or college ready when they get out of high school and yes you know we've gone from bottom of the pack to mid of the pack and so which is awesome but how do we continue to um elevate you know our education system and create better environments for our kids to succeed it's not um it's not a one-size-fits-all approach to education i mean kids learn differently and that's where i really feel like you know i also feel like parents need to be more at the forefront of their mm -hmm. kids education and and i don't think kids necessarily should be you know relegated or defined by the zip code that they live in right but also how do we make our public school system also um you know create higher standards and 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 set them up for success and so you know it's it's uh but we need skill trace training, I mean, uh, they are lost arts, but are absolutely essential to our economy. And one thing I'll say is that, you know, for business owners and leaders, you know, in this community and in any community, you know, statistically internships have resulted in 55 to 60 percent of students sticking around, not only sticking around, but being able to directly enter the workforce. And, you know, with, with labor, we have more jobs and people right now mm -hmm. so we really need to um really focus prioritize and champion um you know recruiting and and retaining our our talent and our our new graduates out of our universities here um 
I mean, again, it, it, yes, it's, it's a 360 on, you know, from education to workforce to economic development. I mean, it is, it is a fluid succession of, you know, uh, of a thriving, you know, thriving community cities, uh, that we need to really, uh, focus on but but we've got to create more opportunities and bottom line set our kids up for success right and we do want to make we do want to make sure uh for all the for all the folks that are watching or listening uh to note that you have been had a concealed carry permit for more than two decades and you are a member of the national rifle association so i know yeah, that, yeah. i know, uh, I know that's i know that's critical for a lot of people so well it is i mean you know i bought my first gun at 25 years old and think i was going squirrel hunting or something but um and yes, I've been an NRA member. I had a carry permit for 25 plus years. I'm a huge Second Amendment advocate. Um, you know, big gun supporter. And uh, you know, and I uh, absolutely. I mean, that's very important to me. Um, and uh, I know there's there's been some discussion on the on the permitless law, uh, carry law, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, just in, in setting the record straight. I mean, I'm, again, a huge Second Amendment advocate, um, but I, knowing Knoxville and my role on council mm. is to support law enforcement to address crime. And we've had two record, we've had yeah. two years of record homicides. And so, you know, talking to law enforcement and talking to friends and various agencies, um, you know, I'm, I don't want to support anything that makes their job harder. Right. And we are the we have been the pipeline for drugs and gangs coming from Detroit. We're, yep. We've been ground zero for that. And so, you know, and and we have been a bit of a community in crisis when it's come to that. And so, you know, I'm just for safety and training or NRA training, whatever that looks like. I feel like there's got to be some accountability. And and um, but. You know, I, I wholeheartedly, I mean, I'm right. I mean, well, and I did, I did a podcast last week with uh, district attorney, Sharm, uh, Sharm Allen, and we talked about Detroit and, and, uh, you know, a lot of the people that have gotten locked up for, for crimes, uh, in Knoxville, uh, have Detroit addresses. So, I mean, it's, it's no secret. Probably the last thing, uh, on your issues from your website and, and then, uh, then we'll start wrapping it up. And, you know, it's something that, I've heard about all my life, which is human trafficking, but you know, you know, I never really thought that human trafficking was as big an issue as it is, but obviously um, we know through the news reports that we hear uh, on a regular basis that human trafficking is a major problem, uh, not just uh, young ladies, but every gender. Uh, and uh, you know, a lot of people that become homeless or not necessarily homeless, but but don't have a stable housing environment. Sometimes we'll get snatched into human trafficking. Um, you know, there's just, it's just society in general has, has just kind of exploded with this whole uh, prostitution and, and people who are grabbing people and, and putting them to work in human trafficking. Uh, and so that's one thing that the legislature, unless, unless it was the one or two issues that I've missed over the last several years, really hasn't dealt with. I know that we have led this, led the country, but, but obviously just kind of talk about what, what your experience has been, uh, and what you've seen, uh, on the research and, and going on with human trafficking. Well, you know, I mean, I, I'm certainly not an expert, but right. I, I know that it is, uh, it is certainly an issue that we need to, that we need to contend with and, and to address in this state and uh and i know that our our law enforcement agencies via tbi or via you know, fbi or or our community agencies are are seeing it and dealing with it from human trafficking child trafficking and um you know we need to you know a protect these children mm -hmm. but um again you know back to resources and set our law enforcement agencies up to be model agencies and equip them to be able to handle 
these types of issues, be it through technology or manpower or whatever the case may be. So, um, and building community partnerships as well. I mean, that's, that's part of the mm. job too, to address some of these tangential issues, be it, be it homelessness, mental health, human trafficking. I mean, again, not all of these issues fall and rest on the shoulders of our law enforcement. It has to be a collaborative effort with these, you know, faith-based agencies or other organizations that are, are specific. And I know there's some good organizations that are really spearheading uh, the education and awareness efforts on human trafficking, and I commend their efforts. Well, I really think that's what, I really think that's what the legislature should be about is trying to help those organizations that, that you know, whether, whether it be uh, animal shelter like uh, Young Williams or whether it be you know, uh, the uh, coalition to stop human trafficking. I mean, I think that's what the, le the legislature should be supportive of those groups and let, and kind of get out of the way and let them do the work. Sometimes the legislature has a tendency to bog down on social issues. Uh, but again, that's nothing that you probably haven't seen in the last couple of years from, from any kind of role, whether it be city council, state house or whatever. Um, well, I don't want to tie you up too much longer. I uh, do want folks to know that they can go to JanetTesterman.com, J-A-N-E-T-T-E-S-T-E-R-M-A-N.com, or on Facebook, Janet Testerman T-N. That would be Janet Testerman Tennessee, shortened Tennessee to T-N. But <laughs> absolutely. So um, you are, uh, I see uh, you're, uh, you're a lifelong Republican. You're running the Republican primary. Early voting is going Till July 30th with the Republican primary on August the 4th. Um, I'll give you a, a couple of minutes or however long you want. We, you know, we're, we haven't quite gone 30 minutes, but uh, I'll get you, let you have the last word and ask folks in dish. Oh, and first describe the boundaries of district 18 because they just re drew some of the districts. So kind of explain district 18 and then do your, do your spill for people's votes and uh, I'll shut up and you'll have the last word. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's a big district, actually. I mean, you can go to the Knox County Commission, uh, Election Commission site and get a map. But uh, it's really kind of the west side of South Knox County. And then you hop over the river, Sequoia Hills, and go down uh, Westland, North Shore, Wallace Road, Gallagher View, and then come down to the Pike. You've got uh, around about Gallagher View over to Middlebrook, but then, gosh, Kingston Pike to uh, basically Cedar Bluff, Pellissippi, hop over to Dutchtown neighborhood, and wow. hang a right and come back door down uh, toward uh, Amherst, Cumberland Estates, and that that area. So it's, wow. it's like a big horseshoe, but it's it's very broad. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, uh, ask the folks for their vote and anything else you want to say. And then uh, I appreciate you being on the 96th episode. I'm tracking real close to 100, but I haven't gotten I know. I'm a little disappointed. I wasn't 100. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> just, I appreciate uh, you thinking of me and allowing me to be on. But, uh, you know, I, here's what I'll say. You know, I'm excited about uh, being the prospect of serving in this seat and being a strong voice uh, and a thoughtful leader uh, for our residents and members of District 18 and our city and county in Nashville. And, um, you know, I want to be a voice of reason uh, and who's willing to learn and understand the issues, you know, and that's, I, I feel like that's what I've always done. I, I want to understand them. Um, um, you know, I'm not one to just check the box or face my decision making on a 140 character Twitter post. Mm. Uh, and headlines and hearsay, you know, it's, these issues are complex and they are issues that impact, you know, a lot of people. But, you know, I will say I love being a public servant and I'm committed to the greater good of our community and to the people who call Knoxville home. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just, uh, I just, people need to get out and vote. I mean, uh, you know, that's what's, that's what's so critical is people being engaged a lot of people i've heard a lot it's like well i just vote in the presidential elections and and uh when state and local are really impact or what impact our day-to-day day -day lives the most but mm. um you know i just 
Uh, and that's what, I mean, it's the vote because every single vote counts is the difference in ensuring we get quality, experienced, competent, knowledgeable candidates. So I'll just say it, it would be my privilege and honor to represent uh, everybody, you know, in District 18, the Tennessee State House of Representatives. And from the bo- bottom of my par- heart, I would be humbled and, and uh, honored to have your vote. All right. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you soon. Good All luck. All right. Thanks, Brian. Uh-huh. Bye-bye.